Let's consider what happens when an electrochemical cell is operating under non-standard conditions. So just as a reminder, the standard condition assumes that the activity is equal to 1 or that the concentration of the ionic solution is 1 molar, which means 1 mole per liter. If it's not the case, though, that the concentrations are 1 molar, then the cell potential will be different from the standard cell potential. So let's consider an example that has uh, zinc and copper, with copper being reduced and zinc being oxidized. So the standard cell potential for this cell is 1.1 volt. What happens, though, if the concentration of copper ions is increased in the solution and at the same time the concentration of zinc ions in the other solution is decreased? So we want to know, does the cell potential go up or down? If we use Le Chatelier's principle, which talks about sort of how much we have on either side of the reaction, we would see that the reaction will have an even stronger tendency to occur, and so the cell potential would be greater. So for this particular example, this would have a stronger tendency to occur, which means that E cells should be greater than the standard cell potential. So let's find a mathematical relationship between the cell potential and the standard cell potential. And this is what is known as the Nernst equation. So we have derived before that delta G is equal to delta G under the standard conditions plus RT ln of Q, where Q is that reaction quotient, that is the quotient of the activities of the products divided by the activities of the reactants. So we can substitute in for the delta G terms what we have derived there, which is NF times E cell. So now we have negative NF times the actual cell potential is negative NF times the standard cell potential plus RT ln of Q. And we can rewrite this to be the cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential minus RT divided by NF ln of Q. If we let T equal 25 degrees C, then we have the following simplification where the cell potential is the standard cell potential minus 0.592 volts times N log of Q. So these are, this is the Nernst equation here. This is the simplified Nernst equation here. And we can sort of see that this gives us back what we expect for the standard conditions, because in the standard conditions, Q equals 1, because all of those activities are 1. And so we find that the cell potential is just equal to the standard cell potential. So let's look at an example, then, of how this works to actually calculate the real cell potential. So here's our example. We want to find the cell potential based on the following half reactions. So we have copper solid going to Cu2+, which is aqueous and with a concentration of 0.01 molar. 
and then we have MnO4 minus aqueous and with a concentration of 2 molar plus hydrogen ions plus 3 electrons going to MnO2 solid and H2O liquid. So our first step is going to be to find the standard cell potential and then our next step will be to use the Nernst equation to find the actual cell potential. So let's start with finding the real cell potential. To come up with a balanced reaction we need to make sure that we have the same number of electrons on both sides which means that for the oxidation reaction, we need to multiply through by 3. Although keep in mind that when we do this, we don't multiply the potential by 3. And let's see, we need a negative sign in here. So the cell potential for this oxidation reaction is negative 0.34 volts. For the reduction half reaction, we need to multiply through by 2. And that has a cell potential of 1.68 volts, so we can write the total reaction as 3 copper plus 2 MnO4 minus plus 8 hydrogens, and that forms 3 copper ions. And you'll notice here that I am leaving out those different concentrations because for the standard cell potential, we are assuming that they are all one molar. So here the total standard cell potential is 1.34 volts. So now we can move on and find the cell potential for the non-standard conditions. have that the cell potential is the standard cell potential minus 0592 volts divided by n times the log of q. So we need to find q volts. The number of electrons total that we have here is 6, so we're going to divide by 6. And then for Q, we can look back to this equation here to find out what we need to put in the numerator and the denominator. So from the right-hand side, from the products, we have Cu2+, plus, and that has a coefficient of 3 on it. And then from the reactants, we have MnO4 minus, and that has a coefficient of 2. And then we have H plus, which has a coefficient of 8. So we are going to plug in here for the copper, 0 0.01. We're going to plug in for the manganese, 2, and for the hydrogen, 1. And when we do that, we end up with E cell is 1.34 volts minus negative 0.065 volts. So the cell potential is equal to 1.41 volts. And that is higher, just like we thought that it would be. The reaction was spontaneous to start with, and the cell potential went up. When we had increased reactant, concentration, that just means that it's more likely to drive the reaction to the right.